We have used a tri-axis accelerometer to measure the vibration on the handle of our lawnmower. And now we want to define a maximum target, which is still allowed. But we don't want to define a maximum target for x, y and z direction. The only one overall target for the complete vibration, doesn't matter which direction. So we need to make a summation of all the three directions. This is tricky. So I will explain a different option how to do it. I explained in this tutorial how to do this and how not to do this. Okay, so watch this and watch out. We continue right at the point where we stopped in the previous video. So this is our measurement with X, Y, Z direction selected. Just start, no filter at all, no analysis, no statistic. Just put the pure time data into your new data viewer. I like to change the setting for the data viewer so everything is in one row. Okay, so for everything, one page, everything for one row. Just view in direct comparison. Calculate, ah, oh, we should activate this here. Double click here, it's also working. So this is the time data and we look inside. So we have X, Y and Z direction. This is our base ground. And you can see here Y is the highest range. Okay, that's we know before. Okay, keep this in mind. The first thing I think, okay, X, Y and Z direction, I want to make a summation and this is a vector. So I need a square, X in square plus Y in square plus Z in square, then is a vector in the room, okay? This should be done just after the time recordings here. So this will be in the filter pool. So I add um, vector magnitude, there it is, okay. Let's see what the setting is here. Vector magnitude, we can say where to change to start. Of course, the first two channels are airborne channels and the third channel is the first we like to use. So we start on the third one and use three channels to make one summation, okay, that's all. And I like to have a bypass as well, just to see if everything works right, okay. Um, so vector magnitude is activated, nothing else. And again, we calculated data viewer. And there it is. Let's see in close up. Now there's another line in there. In blue, so we see green, red and black it delivers a blue line. Let me make it a little bigger here, so you can see it. Okay. Um, this is right, let me see. Um, if I activate a cursor, and place it anywhere, I just can type in the values I can read here on the left. It's 1.1 squared plus 6.2 squared plus 22.4 squared equal root 23.26. Yeah, so it's working, it's fine, I'm done. Hold on. If I'm now go for a level versus time analysis with this data and there's no waiting on and I put in a data viewer, it still looks fine. Okay, so we have X, Y and Z direction and the maximum of all the summands are the biggest one. We can still check another one here. Okay, you can read the values here. So 7 point, it's right. Okay, so it's working. It's fine. No, it's working until this point and now a lot of people make errors. Okay, watch out. Go back in the pool project. If I now like to use a frequency weighting, like we learned before, uh, like A weighting or WH, we can set this here. We have learned to use WH for the hand felt vibration. And calculate one more time, no more changes, we get this result. And this is quite strange because uh, X plus Y plus Z <laughs> leads to a smaller Total summation can't be. The total, the blue line is lower than the three summands. No way, this is wrong, of course. Why? I'll show you. Let's go back to the time signal. What we know, this is the pure time signal, is we have three sinus waves going up and down and they all go below and up zero. But the summation of the three lines, x, y, and so are squared, is always positive. That can't be negative, of course, we're losing the phase information. We only know how big the total vibration is, but we don't know which direction, because this is not interesting which direction it is, we just want to have the value. But this line is always positive. That means it changes its frequencies. If we have 50 hertz going up and down, okay, and now we squared it, it's made 
100 Hz jumping because the negative part is flipped over. Okay, so the frequency from 50 Hz is extended to be 100 Hz. Complete different frequency. And there's more. But the y direction of it has a small shift to so this 50 Hz, not the 50 Hz. In a summation, it looks like 100 Hz, which is flipped to 200 Hz. All the frequency information is gone if you make a vector magnitude. Okay, got this. We are not allowed to use any frequency weighting or frequency analysis after the vector calculation. So we switched it off here. But in the filter pool, we can change the order of calculation. So we first have to make a frequency weighting. So we activate this filter here and then add the vector magnitude after the frequency weighting. This we don't need anymore here. So we use the filter on the pure time data of each direction and then we add these filtered signals to one magnitude. Okay, well, then we go to level versus time. Let's check. Okay, now it's working again. Green plus black plus red delivers blue. Yeah. Okay, I find it's now. I get it now. But what if I like to have an analysis which use frequency, which is quite common. We want to have an FFT calculation of our total level. It doesn't work anymore because of course FFT looks on the frequency and doesn't get the right frequency. <sighs> and we have to switch over. It's still possible. Vector magnitude works only on level. It's an analysis that doesn't look at the frequencies, okay? If you want to have FFT average, we can't use vector magnitude in the filter pool. We use the frequency weighting on each individual direction, then make three FFT average for each individual direction, and then we make the summation of the three FFT analysis to be one, okay? This goes in the statistic pool. <laughs> You're going to be professional. So we add a package for channels and there we need, well, it offers me max, average and min. We need a summation in the room. It's all in there, but not, just, not all the people need this, okay? So we just add, insert a function and then we can choose a lot and there will be a summation, okay? And the setting for summation would be outer, just to make sure I want to have a quad summation, yeah, squared. And just for comparison, I also add the bypass. Then we can see if it really works. So the same offer again, frequency weighting, level versus time and FFT also in there, a bypass. And here we make the summation go in a data view. Let's see if it works. Looks good. Like the first view on the left side, we can see green, black and red, it was blue. Well, it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same values. Okay, fine. Uh, we go back here and here also at the frequencies, we can see X, Y and Z delivers blue. There's no frequency shift. So this is the way you can always make a summation of three direction if you have X, Y and Z measured. So the safest way is to put it in a statistic package in the end. Okay. One more thing, the last video will be how to display X, Y and Z direction to see in the graph, to see the faces inside. See you there. Bye.